welcome. Let's make him feel welcome. Bishop Dr. William Twimisey. Praise the Lord. Amen. I would like to greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Jambo. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. First of all, I am so delighted to be with you today. I would like you to know I appreciate this opportunity. And when I arrived here, because it is a long time since I was around, I looked at the building and I said, wow, God has blessed you in a special way. Praise the Lord. I was here last time when the building was not as beautiful as it is. Uh, I think the building was not, uh, I did not have even balcony, but the Lord has really increased you in a special way. May God praise you so much, Jimmy. I would like you to know I appreciate you, and indeed I honor you. I appreciate you, and I thank God very sincerely for you. When I think of where you started, uh, right there across the road, it was a Mabati building, which the floor was just full of dust. You go there with clean shoes. After that, you have got to go to the shoe shiner. Huh? Because it was very dirty. But now, look at this beautiful building. But as I was saying in the morning, in the first service, I say, let this be your attitude. Thank God for this new building and this beautiful building. But the best is yet to come. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That should be your attitude in life. May you always say, the best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Now, as you have heard, my name is Peter William Timissing. I was there when Deliverance Church was declared a church. That is, I'm one of the founders of Deliverance Church, which was 1970. I was, um, I was there with Chokayo, and Chokayo led us for eight years. Then I took over for 22 years before I handed over to Bishop Makariuki. Many people don't see me many times because I usually say the sons are known because they are in the city. Their fathers are not known because they are in the village. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But once in a while, the fathers come to the city. Today, I have come to the city. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I led the Lord's church for 22 years and I handed over to Bishop Makariuki, not because I was too old to lead, but because somebody said, in your position, whatever you are, wherever you are, you are not successful until your successor has succeeded. You are not successful and little successor has succeeded. Praise the Lord. So I thought I should hand over to somebody else who is younger than me so that I can declare myself successful when he has been successful. Praise the Lord. So that is why I, am, um, I hand it over so that I can be able to, uh, to declare myself successful. But even before Little Brother Church was founded, I was still ministering elsewhere. And therefore I ministered today for the last 56 years. 56 years. From 1962 before independence. Hallelujah. I've been saying the Bible says. The Bible says. And as you can see, I'm not very old. I can go another 50 years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Because the Lord has renewed my strength. If you want to know the secret of staying young for all those years. As he has, as he has said, I'm now uh, seventh floor. Huh? Very soon I will hit eighth floor. But you can see I'm still able to run. Praise the Lord. If you want to know the secret of that, buy the book, Through the Eyes of Christ. You will discover why you can remain young and strong for over 56 years. In the ministry, not when I was born. In the ministry. Praise the Lord. So thank you so much for inviting me again. I would like to mention somebody, or one person in particular, who insisted that I should come. I thank God for uh, Bishop Jimmy, who has welcomed me warmly. But the person who actually told me, you must come today, is Kenneth Chitala. Chitala, please, can you stand up? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is the man who actually bought some lunch for me. And I was wondering what for. He said, I want you to come. <laughs> so if you want me to come, buy me lunch. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chitala. Uh, with your wife. Uh, uh, his wife has been serving me with, uh, with K KCB. I've been a member of KCB, uh, Kinja, uh, Kinja Commercial Bank, but uh, that is a uh, car center. So that's the wife has always been serving me. Every time I see her, I know all my problems of KCB are solved. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Now, I realize I've got to begin very quickly because of time. Now, um, can we turn to the book of First, Thessalonians, First Corinthians chapter 4? First Corinthians chapter 4. 
Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 4. We shall read verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Praise the Lord. Now, for your information, in the Old Testament, when they used to read the scriptures, especially during the time of Ezra, they used to stand up when they were reading the word of God. Can we stand up? Can we stand up? Praise the Lord. St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, and he said to them, for though you, have mind, you might have many, uh, have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have be, I begotten you through the gospel. Shall we pray as you are standing? Our heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to thank you very sincerely for an opportunity like this to come before your people and interpret for them the secrets of God. Master, I want to tell them and tell you also that I have nothing on my own. I'm depending on you entirely. I pray that every statement that I make, every word that comes from my mouth, may it be sanctified by the Holy Spirit, may it be dictated by the Holy Spirit, may it be instructed by the Holy Spirit. May I just be a vessel. May my mouth be just there for you to use for the glory of your name. Master, at the end of it all, I will give you the glory and honor because you deserve it all. Thank you for coming down and ministering to us, even through the scriptures today. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So may God bless you so much you may be seated. Today, being Men's Sunday, that's what I was told, Men's Sunday, that's why men are wearing uh, red tie. I don't know, they never told me to wear a red tie, but I'm now, <laughs> I don't know, it looks like the spirit is leading. I see nearly everybody here with red tie. This was a red tie day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, St. Paul was writing to the Corinthians, and he told them, for though you might have 10,000 instructors, instructors here are guardians, but you have very, very few fathers. You don't have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I begot a new through the gospel. I want to share with you today how you can tap the blessings from God even by not even working hard. You know, there are blessings that you have got to sweat, but there are blessings that you receive because of your behavior. Praise the Lord. Because of the way you are behaving. I want to share with you how you can get blessings by honoring your fathers. Praise the Lord. By honoring your fathers. Now, when I say honoring your fathers, I would like you to know the Bible tells us honor your father and mother in the Lord so that your days may be multiplied. But listen, when you are a small child, you obey your parents. But when you grow up, instead of obeying, you honor them. Praise the Lord. So there's a difference between when you are young, a child, you obey because they give you instructions. But when you grow old, like the way you are, you need to honor them. Let me tell you. There are about 10 fathers that I'm going to mention. 10 fathers. Different people who have come across your life. People who have helped you, sometimes without your knowledge. And you need to appreciate them in one or another. 10 of them. But you honor nine of them. One last one, I would like you to dishonor. How about that? To dishonor. I'm going to mention one that you need to chase him away. If he comes to your house anytime, make sure that he disappears. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You will know that one when I finish. Now, so I'm going to mention uh, them one by one. Then I'm going to dwell maybe uh, on three of them. The first one that you need to honor. And this one is special because it's more important than the rest. Is your heavenly father. Amen. Your heavenly father. And I'm going to share with you how you can be able to honor your heavenly father. In the book of Luke chapter, chapter, chapter 11 verse 2. Luke chapter 11 verse 2. Jesus Christ himself was speaking and he told the people. Luke chapter 11 verse 2. He said, so he said to them, when you pray, say, our father in heaven. Allow be thy name. Your kingdom come. You will be done in earth as it is heaven. Remember he's saying, remember to say your father in heaven. 
Why? There are other fathers on earth. So this one is special. Your father in heaven. And I'm going to show you the best way to honor him. Praise the Lord. So remember that. That is your father in heaven. Number two. Another father that you need to honor. Is your father in Christ. Your father in Christ. This is the person who brought you to the Lord. In the, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, St. Paul was speaking to these people because he was the father in Christ to them. That is uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Look at what he said in 4, verse 15. He said, for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, for you do not have, but you do, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I begotten you through the gospel, meaning that I have travailed until you are born in the kingdom of God. This is your father in Christ. What am I talking about? I'm talking about somebody who led you to the Lord. Somebody who told you, repeat this prayer after me. Somebody who opened your eyes to see the kingdom of God. Somebody who preached to you, or even who shared with you about the gospel, and when you were convinced that you are a sinner, he told you, repeat this prayer after me. Let me tell you, please, I repeat. Please honor that person the rest of your life. Sometimes they may, they may not be even a member of Pentecostal church. He may be a, a Catholic, a, not a Catholic, but I don't know whether the Catholic is scared. But uh, he may be a Methodist. He may be one. For example, myself, the person who helped me in my Christian life, when my early life, that is Father in Christ, who begotten me, is a member of a church where they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. So, but I honor that person because I remember he's the one who nurtured me when I was young. He's the one who told me about salvation. He's the one who shared with me about the kingdom of God. So the other day, apparently he came from another church. I told my wife, I've got to honor that man. I want to appreciate him. I know he's not a member of my church. I know he's not even believing, does not believe in the Holy Spirit. It is through him that I, I was able to introduce into the spiritual world. The rest of the people, like people who helped me to grow up in the salvation, they came later. But the one who led me, who opened my eyes to see the kingdom of God, is this man. So I told my wife, let's go and see him. I want to go and appreciate him. But you know what? I come from Kalenjin uh, tribe. In Kalenjin, the best way to, to honor an old man yeah, if you want to hold on me, you'd better do that. The way you to hold on a whole man is to buy a blanket. Yeah, blanket. And you know, it must be a good blanket. Hallelujah. So I went to the shop, and I wanted to get the best blanket. And I went, and I told the best way to know to, to get the best blanket is when I went to the shop where they were sending blanket. And I told the shopkeeper, which among these blanket is the most expensive? <laughs> because I knew expensive means what good quality. Say, give me that one. He gave me two of them. I bought, it. I bought two. So I told my wife, let's go. And I told her, can you this some money so that you can buy food stuff for the kitchen? Because as a mother, you don't go empty handed. So she bought some sugar, whatever. So I took the two blankets. When, when I told him that we are coming, he called the neighbors. He said, neighbors, come. There's a, there's a young man who used to be a member of my church. And he disappeared to go to another child called deliver, 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 Deliverance. <laughs> but he's coming today. I don't know why he's coming to see me after many years. So I went to see him. When I went there and I found the neighbors there, when we have eaten and full, uh, I said, excuse me, I've come to see you because there's one thing that I would like you to know. He said, what? It is because of you that I came to know Jesus Christ as my personal savior. You are the one who opened my eyes to see the kingdom of God. You are the one who, as it were, you are was naked spiritually without salvation. But you are the one that God used. Oh, man. To be able to use, God used to be able to open my eyes. Other people have helped me in my Christian life. They came later. But before you, you, you are the one who, who, who covered me the first time. And because of that, I want to do a prophetic action. And the prophetic action is, because you covered me spiritually, because I was naked, I'm going to cover you physically. Amen. So I took the blanket and I opened it. I told my wife, take that one and give to the mother. So I told my wife, let us walk towards them in style. 
The same way we got married, Mama. So we walked in style. <laughs> Hallelujah. We walked in style with the blanket open. And when he said, what, what, what is that? I went and I covered him. Wah! And my wife covered the Mama. Wah! Let me tell you, they cried like children. <laughs> they say, even my own children have never done this. Let me tell you, friends, I would like you to know that when you do such a thing, God will open doors that you have never seen. Amen. Appreciate people who have touched your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So that one, St. Paul say, I have begotten you. That man begotten me through the, Lord, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number three, the other person that you need to honor is your spiritual father. Hallelujah. Your spiritual father. This is the man that God used to be able um, to take care of you, praise the Lord. To take care of you spiritually. In this case, your, your bishop here and the other pastors who are here are the ones who have taken care of you spiritually. Praise the Lord. I want to show you a man, the, the, the same St. Paul, when he was writing to Timothy. He said in the book of 2 Timothy, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 and 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. He was writing to Timothy. Hallelujah. And he said, you therefore, my son, speaking as a father, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Why? Your spiritual father is concerned with your spiritual life. He's a man who say, I wish you well, my son. Praise the Lord. I remember when I was handing over to Bishop Makariuki. I think some of you probably were there in, in, the, in, the, in, uh, um, in Nyaya Stadium. I looked at Bishop Makariuki straight on the eye. And I told him, uh, Bishop Mark, I would like you to know I wish you well. I wish you well. May God take you to places that he never, never took me. May God promote you more than he promoted me. May God lift you up better than he lifted me up. May God continue to push you to another level more than he did to me. Why? Your spiritual father is concerned about your spiritual life. He said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, my son. He's concerned about his son. Praise the Lord. He's continued to say in verse 2. He says in verse 2. Look at what, what he says in verse 2. He said in verse 2. Hallelujah. He said, And the thing that was heart of me, among many witnesses, commit there, there this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Let me tell you, sir. Your spiritual father wants you to grow up out of the level of being a father also. Amen. Or a mother also. Here you say, my son, you have learned from me, my son. You have seen the way I behave. May those things that you have heard from me, hallelujah. In fact, I'm sharing with you, and I say, please, this message that I'm sharing with you, share with others, hallelujah. Share with others. And don't even, don't even measure that I had it from Bishop Timothy. You just say, the Lord revealed to me, hallelujah. Why? It's because it is God who sticks to you, not to me. <laughs> and by the way, I also learned it from somewhere. Yes. Hallelujah. So you see, this thing that you have heard from me among many witnesses, my son, commit this to faithful men who will be able to, be, to, 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 to teach others also. Then he continued to say in verse 3, he said, you therefore must endure hardship as a good child of Jesus Christ. I like that. He said, my son, this world is full of problems. <laughs> This world is full of problems, my son. I would like it to endure hardness. Don't be so easy to be dis discouraged. You know, there are people who are easily discouraged. He said, my son, I have gone through thick and thin. I would like you to know you should endure into hardness. But look at verse 7. I like verse 7, among all others. Praise the Lord. He said in verse 7, consider what I say. And may, and, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. He said, my son, take my word seriously. <laughs> he said, my son, whatever I'm sharing with you, don't take it lightly. Hallelujah. He said, consider what I say. May God give you deep understanding. He said, please, I would like you to know the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Consider what I say. Please, my son, don't despise me. Please, my son, take my advice seriously. 
My son, I would like you to know that I'm speaking with you because I want you to be promoted. Hallelujah. That's why I'm saying, Mark, Jimmy, may God bless you to build more cases or more than this one. May God continue to lift you up that you may continue to climb the ladder. That's why I say, your attitude should be, Lord, I thank you for what you have done for us. But the best is just to come. He said, consider what I say, my son. Praise the Lord. Look at the heart of our father. Look at what the father says, the spiritual father. He wishes you well. Praise the Lord, consider. And please respect him. Respect that man who wishes you well. May I, may I, uh, Bishop Jimmy McMahon did not tell me to campaign for him. But let me tell you the truth. If you want blessing, look for a day. As an individual, as a family, visit him. Try to find out the size of his shoes. The size of his suit. And find out the colors. Because you may buy a color that he does not like. So find out the colors. And buy that. And go to him. Let him know that you appreciate him. And make sure that Alice is not forgotten. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May you do this and I'm telling you the truth. You will be blessed of God. God will bless you in a special way. Praise the Lord. Number four, another father that you need to consider. Is that father in the ministry? Praise the Lord. Father in the ministry. What am I talking about? I'm talking about somebody who summed something in you. And he is actually here that indeed you can be useful in the kingdom of God. He appointed you an usher. He has appointed you the head of a, 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 a home fellowship. He, that, that father in the ministry, he saw something that indeed he knew that can be used of the kingdom of God. Look at what St. Paul said to the Philippians. In the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 19. Philippians chapter 2 verse 19. He is talking about his son Timothy. Hallelujah. He said, but I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to send Timothy to you shortly, that I may also be encouraged when I know your state. Hallelujah. He said, there's a man that I have been bringing up. A man that, has, a man that I see has something that he can be delivered to you. Look at the next verse. He told him this. He said, for I have no other like-minded who will sincerely care for your needs. He has seen Timothy and said, this man has something others have not, they don't have that. He said he's a man of like-minded. I love him. I, there's something that he has for the kingdom of God. Look at what he says in verse 21 concerning others. In 21 he said, for all seek their own, not the things which are of great Jesus. Kuna wengine wanatavuta pesa. But not this one. Kuna wengine wanatavuta sifa. But not this one. He said, my, this is my son. Why? He saw something in Timothy. I appreciate that person who encouraged you in the ministry. Praise the Lord. When I saw Jimmy driving matter two, I looked at him and God told me that this is not his rightful place. Excuse me, I'm supposed to be one of the guests. I said, yes, sir. Why? The father of the movement. What am I talking about? There are people who have continued to protect the, 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 the ministry. For example, Chokayo is the one that was able to stand firm and promoted the Pentecostalism. The other people did not want to hear anything about the Pentecostalism. But Chokayo spoke and he stood firm. I was telling the other, the other church that uh, there was a time when they were in university and they were there with bishops from other churches who did not believe in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Chokai said, may I stand by that regardless of what you say. He was chased away. When he was chased away, he said, all those students who are for Pentecostalism, come with me. Oh, nearly everybody went there. Why? He stood firm. Praise the Lord. May you respect the father of movement. Number 10. This is the one I told you. Ukiona fukusa ye kabisa. Kap fukusa ye kabisa. And that is the devil. He stole father in sin. <laughs> Look at what Jesus Christ said in the book of John chapter 8 verse 44. John chapter 8 verse 44. Praise the Lord. John chapter 8 verse 44. Look at what, 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 um, what, what Jesus Christ himself said. John chapter 8 verse 44. He said you are of your father the devil. The desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, 
He speaks from his own resources. For he is the fa- liar and the father of it. He is also referred to as a father. Fukusa he. Ukiwa na nyumba yako asikule asikule asise ho wherever you are double call. Fukusa he. He is also referred to as a father. So every time you commit sin you are supporting that. Because he's the father of sin. May you run away from that one. May you never respect that one. May you never even listen to him. Chase him away. He is referred to as a father, but he is not a good father. Praise the Lord. Now, let me now go back to the, the one that I said I'm going back. The one that I want to tell you now is your biological father. Praise the Lord. Biological father. Some of us are saying, excuse me, Bishop, that man you call biological father is not with us anymore. He ran away from us. Or you are saying, Bishop, hey, hey, the one you are talking about is a drunkard. Bishop, analala kwa mtaro. Ata kama analala mtaro, let me tell you the truth, he is better than the one in the Bible. Why? Analala nguo. Kuna mwingine alilala pila nguo. Biblia. Look at the book of Genesis. Chapter 9. Ulu mjamaa alilala pila nguo. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, alilala alilala pila nguo. Chapter 9, verse 20. This is, this is the man called Noah. Noah. He was drunk. And he was drunk. Look at what he did. In chapter 9. And Noah began to be a farmer. And he planted a vineyard. Verse 22, 21. Then he drank of the wine. And was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. Yani alilala uchi. Yani pilangu. Atandani, alandani, akula. Look at what happened. His own younger son came. The Bible says, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Listen to what was happening. First of all, take note of what the Bible is saying. He was a father of Canaan. Ham, the father of Canaan. The rest we are not told whether they were father of who. But this one in particular, the, 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 the son is mentioned. He was the father. So he was Ham and his son, he was the father of Canaan. Now listen now. He came, verse 23, he came to the tent and he saw the nakedness of his father. 22 please. He says the nakedness of his father. And he went and he called his brothers outside. What does he, what was happening? He said, Come! Chapes and shame, come. So they were saying, what is happening? Sinemba ya bure. Sinemba ya bure. He, he, come and see Sinemba ya bure. So the, the young man came. He said, what is happening? He, he told them, Mze, ujaona he in this style. <laughs> when they came in, instead of doing exactly what Ham did, look at verse 23, Shame and Shepherd took the cannon, laid it on their, both their shoulders like this, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were, were turned away from, the, from, from them, and they did not see the father's nakedness. May you not see your father's nakedness. Press, don't, don't forget this one was drunk. Your father is drunk, but anakana nanguo. Who you are uchi. But look at this. The shame said we cannot. I'm going to may you cover your father even if he's a drunkard. May you buy him clothes even if he's a drunkard. May you cover your father. Look at the results of covering your father. Praise the Lord. Look at that. So Noah awoke up from his wine and knew what his younger son had done. Look at what, what happened after that. He said in verse 25. The Bible says, then he said, the old man is cursing now. Cast be canon. A servant of servant he shall be to his brethren. Can you see he never cursed harm. He cursed his son. There's no harm here. There's no harm here. And this old man said, I'm not even cursing you. I'm cursing your seed. That explains why in this country, many of the people in this country, their children are drunkards. Their children are, are, are alcoholic. It's because their children have been cursed. These people are enjoying, but the children are cursed. Meaning that 
entire generation is completely blotted out. May you obey your parents and consider, may you honor your parents for the sake of your children if there's nothing else. May you be, listen, he said, can't be canon. A servant of someone shall he see to his brethren. He, and yet it is not the one who cast, who, who, who showed the nakedness. It was harm. But he cast his seed. Praise the Lord. Look at the next one. Look at the people who covered him. Praise the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of shame. And Canaan shall be his servant. Can you see? He still defied Canaan, not Ham. He said, The son of Ham, Canaan, shall be the servant of shame. Then, verse, the next verse. Look at that. And God enlarged Chapeth. Now, Chapeth meaning that is second born. And may he dwell in the tents of shame and may Canaan be his servant. Not harm. May you, may you honor, hallelujah, your parents because for the sake of your children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let me jump now to, because of time to God, the heavenly father. How do you honor God? Look at Malachi chapter 1. How we honor God. Praise the Lord. Honor, honor God. You know honor God through giving. In the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Look at what God said. Those days they used to give uh, goats and sheep as offering. But God was asking a very interesting question. And say. Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. Sorry, verse 6, not 1. Verse 6. He said in verse 6. Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. God was complaining because of the way people were giving. It says, a son honored his father. And a servant is master. If then I'm a father to you, what is my honor? If I'm a master to you, what is my reference? Says the Lord of hosts. To you, priest, who despise the name, my name. You, uh, yet you say... Uh, he, he, he said, in what way have we despised your name? Because of your giving. Look at verse 7. He said in verse 7, you offer divine food on the altar, but you say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. Verse 8, we will explain this better. He says in verse 8, and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame as a, as, as, and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept your, 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 you favorably, favorably? Says the Lord of hosts. Friends, we are going to give. And the question is, how do you honor God through your giving? Are you giving God change? I said in the first service, somebody said, every time you are giving Offering. You are treating God as G O D or you have reversed the letters. You have reversed the letters. Instead of G O D, you have started with D O G. And you know how you treat D O G? He's waiting outside there for a bone, one to crack, and you are eating the bone. He, lo he looks at you and says, Don't finish the meat. Uh -huh. Please don't finish the meat. At least throw the bone with the meat. Go, go, go. The DOG is looking at you. That is how people are treating God. Nowadays, they give God change. Praise the Lord. Listen. In the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, the one that is, that is about uh, giving. Praise the Lord. I have seconds now. Listen. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. He said, bring me all the tithes into the house that there may be meat in my house and, 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 and try me, says the Lord of hosts. If I have not opened the windows of heaven and, and, and pour out for you such blessing that there will be no room enough to, to receive. Listen to me now. Many people have taken blessing to be money only. Let me tell you the truth. Blessing is more than money. Did you know that? Why? Money has limitation. Why? You, money can buy for you a golden bed. Or for that matter, we are golden mattress. And money cannot buy sleep. Yeah. You toss in bed the whole night. Eh, well, money that has bought bed. 
but not sleep. And then the Bible says, God blesses people with sleep. Praise the Lord. Money can buy very expensive food from Hintakun in a little hotel. But money cannot buy appetite. Unangaliatu. Come to come, I'm going to say, 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 i you can measure your health. I'm going to help. So money is limited. My time is up. Praise the May I request you, take my words seriously. And you will see the blessings of what I've shared. My, I'm telling you, I have come here as a prophet of God. To tell you this, the best way you can receive blessing. If you have not been contacting your father this afternoon, look for his number or the neighbor, number of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the neighbor. And say, say, I just wanted to tell you that I love you. And send somebody through MS Mbesha. Hallelujah. So that I got to tell me put it to Can we close our eyes for prayer? Our heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for these people. Thank you because I have spoken to them what you wanted me to speak to them. Master, I pray that they will honor their fathers that I have mentioned. Of course, except one, that is the devil. Lord, I pray that they will take this message seriously. And they will be able to honor those people that I have mentioned. Lord, but I know, before they, they, they honor you with their substances, they must be able to honor you with their lives. If you are here and you are not saved, I would like you to know the best gift that you can give to God before you give your gifts is your life. Get saved. So if you are here and you are not saved, remember, you need to honor God by giving your life to him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.